Okay, so I'm here with Johannes Kopf, and we're going to talk about inverse half toning of comics arts. Comics art. Comics Tell, art. So yeah. what is this, Johannes? Okay, so it's um, it's it's about converting printed comic books into digital form. You know, I have this this passion of of digitizing things. I mean, especially like the the things I played with as a, as a child. So last year. I depixelized or upresed, you know, icons or, or sprites from computer games, okay. old school computer games. And this year, I'm looking at these um, beautiful Belgian comic books, which are just amazing artwork. Oh, hold um, on, you're moving right. faster than that. There we go. Okay. Yeah, All I right. Mean, you can't really see it, I guess, in the, in the camera. But you know, really, if you look at these, um, you know, it invites you to to zoom in and you know, look at all the details. Right. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to. Um, Turn these into digital form, and and I think one of the problems they're half toned, right? Are they, so exactly. so if you just run them through a scanner, you get yes. a bunch of pixels. And I can show it you actually on the screen. Okay. So if you if you scan these in at, at high resolution, um, you see that you you see all these artifacts from the printing process, and um, as I said, it's due to half toning right. because you know these offset printers that they use to to print these, um, they're they're binary devices, so they can either lay down ink or they don't. So in order to you know, reproduce continuous tone colors, what you do is you um, use a technique called AM screening. Okay. And it's essentially a regular grid of, of dots, and you vary the size of them to, to you know, um, create the, the impression of varying ink coverage. Oh, okay. And, and this is exactly what you see here, right? So you see these, these uh, cyan dots here, and here you see a combination of cyan, magenta, and yellow. And so because of that, there has been a lot of um, research in the past, you know, a couple of decades on, on removing this artifact, on, on mm -hmm. inverse half-toning or de-screening. And so basically what all these methods do is they just, just blur the image, right? And it seems okay. the appropriate thing to do, right? Because right. Um, you, you take you know, the average over some area, and then you get the, the color that you see with your eye. Okay, right? Yeah, yeah. I've actually but, tried doing it by hand with the de-blurring, the, the yeah, <laughs> the blurring. In right. Yeah. But you know, with comic books, Format. it's actually interesting because they are printed in a slightly different way. And it's, it's, it's due to the way these are made. So um, when an artist draws a comic book, what they do is they first draw just using black ink. Okay. So they draw all these, these lines that you see here in this image. Right. And then in a separate process, they, they take this black and white image and they photocopy it using very faint blue ink on a piece of paper. And then somebody colorizes them using watercolors. Okay. And so you have colors and you have black ink. And what they do is they print the colors using the screen that I just described. Mm -hmm. But the black is already binary, so there's no need to screen it, mm -hmm. right? And they don't. So, so they actually put it on a separate layer. Right, so okay. it's, it's, it's four color uh, printing process, right. C, M, Y, and K, which is black. And you can see it here, right? So in this image here, um, you see that the colors are screened, but the black lines are not. Okay, so if you, so if you, if you, just, de -blur, or if you just blur it, you lose the quality of the black and white then? Yes, and right, and so the important point is the, the black lines have much higher fidelity than the, the colors, right? Yes. So you see many right. of these black lines, um, their, their width is on the order of, of one of these screening dots. And so if you blur them, it's exactly as you said. So here I have an example, right? This is an input image. And you know, the most basic thing you can do is you just, just blur it using a Gaussian right. filter. Right, okay. And you know, so the, the screening more or less goes away. You can still see a little bit. But all the details in the black lines are lost. So it looks very blurry. Yes. And you know, you can refine on that, so there's um, you know, a method which uses median filter, filtering, after Gaussian filtering, and so it gets a little bit better, but you still have a lot of artifacts, it's overly smooth. Right. And, you know, there are other methods, you know, there's, uh, you know, the specialized method here, or, you know, an Etcher filter. Okay. You know, bottom you line, see it makes the black they, they, they all don't really work well, yeah, yeah, yeah. because they, they, they are not all aware right. of this. Uh, yeah. specific situation that you have in, in, in comics art. Right. And uh, so we designed a method that is able to handle that. And, you know, like, from 10,000 feet, you can, can think of this more or less as, as a problem of separating out these black lines, right? But the problem is that, you know, detectors, you know, for, for lines or, um, you know, like color-based segmentation don't work on these images because they get confused by the screening patterns, right? Okay. So, so edge detectors, for example, fire everywhere on this image because right. you have these dots. Right. And so the way to, to do this, um, for you don't want to go into deep details oh, yeah, here, no, well, it's... We've got at least five minutes, man. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's basically, um, what we did is we, we, we modeled the printing process in a very rigorous way. So um, essentially we built this model where you 
have this grid of, of dots. Okay. And um, we, we you know have a model for them. It's uh, six degrees of freedom. It's essentially a profile. And so we try to recover that. And find all the dots. And yes, yeah, so we try to okay. recover the dots. And then uh, we have a separate model for the black lines, which is just the binary MRF. Right. But um, this binary MRF uses the uh, recovered dots as a data. So track. MRF, what does MRF mean? It's, it's, mark of, it's a mark of random. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So, so essentially, um, you have you know like like data terms, and then you have pairwise terms, which you can right. use to enforce some smoothness. And um, the the reason is this works is because the um, this this color dot model works as a as a regularizer. So, you know, in places where we can um, you know recover these dots well, um, there's no need to to put black ink there in our model, right? Okay. So we don't. Anyway, long. Cool. Long no, story. no, it was a short story, actually. It was a short story. I made it very yeah, short. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's actually, it's, it's, it's quite complicated because it turned out extremely difficult to do this. I mean, um, we first tried all kinds of simple methods, right? So, uh -huh. so we tried, you know, just, just thresholding, for example, the black line and so on. Oh, but okay. But it, it doesn't work because it's actually very ambiguous. I mean, if you think about it, we have um, four printed channels, but when we scan it in, we only have three colors, right? Uh, Red, green, right. blue. Yeah. So we have to recover this four channel representation from a three from channel. From a three channel. So there's and it's ambiguous pitch. actually. So if you look at a dark uh, spot in this image here, so often, you know, in the color areas, you find colors that are darker than in some of these black lines, oh. which makes it very difficult. So, in right. the, you know, that, that, that is you know, the reason why we had to use these more complicated models. Okay. Um, so I guess I could jump in and show you a bunch of results if you want. Yeah, yeah, let's so see. I built this, let's this, see how great it is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's beautiful. So, I mean, I built this viewer here, um, which, which really lets you to zoom in and see all the details, right? Right. And so what I can do now is I can swipe over. Oh! I can show you. <laughs> that rocks! Our result. <laughs> wow, oh my gosh. And you see how, how, how faithful it is, how accurate it is. Yeah, oh my gosh. That's just amazing. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And you know, I, love I the hate that you're a graphics guy. You know, OS guys, we have the boringest demo. Uh, no, the compiler guys. The compiler guys have the worst demos. We have the second worst. <laughs> you have these rocking demos. <laughs> okay, oh, wait. that is amazing. There, there's actually more to this. Uh, there's another one. Actually, there, there's a bug in this image here. I only get the black lines in the upper half of the image. But, but anyway. Wow. So you get all the detail, which is very nice. Oh my gosh. That's just amazing. Let's, let's see. And you know, I tried a bunch of, of different books. So, I, um, let's see. So this is another one from the same book. Okay, now. And, you know, oh, I see. You zoomed out. That's why you don't see a lot of difference there. As you now, as you zoom in. Right. Yes. Okay. So I think you know the question is you know how how much do you want to zoom in, right? Yeah. Um, so so obviously I scanned these at an insane resolution, right? It's just twelve hundred DPI. Right. Um, so I think you want to read these comics on, on digital devices is, is you know, th think of a tablet interface, right? So what you want to do is you don't want to display the whole page, but you want to read the comic panel by panel. And then you can right. think of this uh, swap interface where you just, just you know, wipe with your hands yeah. and you go from panel to panel. So um, that's essentially the resolution that you're, you're, you're targeted at. And definitely at this resolution, when you see the full panel on screen, you can very obviously see, you know, the screening artifacts. Effects. Yep. Yeah. And so, so there's really a need to, to do something about them. That, so, so okay. So is this really now? How fast is this? It's slow. Okay. So the good thing is it's fully automatic, uh -huh. but it's, it's it's slow because it's 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 not very optimized, and it's a highly nonlinear optimization. Okay. So it takes about ten minutes per for each of these per panels. each of these panels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's what uh, the clouds for, man. That's what the cloud's for. Yes, and I, I think there's there's a lot of benefit to this. Um, I can talk. I can show you a little bit about things I have in mind for future research. Okay. In this area. Yeah, let's talk about um, it. So, so one one interesting thing about this is also that um, our presentation is is very compressed. So if, if you think about it, um, it's it's not. You know, the size of our presentation is not dependent on the resolution that we scan it in. Right. It's it only depends on. The, the information that is in the panel, which is, you know, the number of, of screening dots we see there and, um, you know, I guess the fidelity at which we want to represent these black lines because right. they're vectorized. But um, it actually turns out that it's, you know, very, you know, it's much smaller than um, a scan of these images. Oh, okay. And I can, can show you an example. And much smaller than, say, like a JPEG. 
yes. for quality that you'd have, right? Right. So let me try. Let's see. I have the. I have this figure in my paper, which is um, is interesting. So, yeah. So this is just a very small uh, region from one of these panels here. And what you see is here. You see the the scanned input in uncompressed form, and for the whole panel, it's about 100 megabytes. Okay. And then our presentation is 230 kilobytes, and you know it's like infinite resolution, so you can zoom in and see all the details. Right. And you know if you roughly try to to you know match the similar qualities in JPEG, it's um, Four meg, yeah. yeah, it's about four point five max, so it's it's much larger, and that That's would be for for a single panel. Yeah. Now, if you try to to you know match the same size of a representation, you, you get you know all these JPEG artifacts here. Yes. And so, if you think about digital delivery, um, this is this is clearly a win. Oh, right. So that's 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 one thing I'm looking at. Actually, I would love to to get somebody to to use this technique to, you know, republish these old comic books. That right. Would be right. 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 I sounds like a rock and Windows eight app. Yeah, well, yeah, we should talk to these guys. Yeah. So the uh, other thing I'm looking into is, is um, using this representation for editing uh, uh, the comic books. And if you think about it, it's, it makes it much easier, right? Because we, we have now recovered all these black lines in, in a very crisp manner. Mm -hmm. And so then it, it really aids you doing region selection, which is kind of one of the fundamental operations for editing. So I actually played around with this and built a small kind of, you know, segment, ma like manual segmentation tool where you, you could draw scribbles over the image and then it would solve a little multi-label graph card problem. Okay. And, you know, required a little bit of, of touch-up and, and, you know, actually I want to work on that. But essentially what I did is I, I generated a layer mask for, you know, one of these panels here. And this is done manually. Right. right? But what you can use this for is, and uh, hold your breath, this is amazing. You can use this to put these panels into 3D. And let me show you how this works. Okay. So, essentially I have, you know, this, this is the, the panel I worked on. Okay. And I, I drew a few scribbles over, you know, the characters, you know, the rocks and so on. Right. And then I, I, I separated it into four different planes. Okay. And then I pushed these planes onto the different layers and filled the holes, right? All right, hold on, let me zoom in. I, I have a feeling we're going to want to really good picture of this. Okay. Right. So what I can do now is I can peel off, you know, this panel layer by layer, right? So I can, for example, remove okay. the characters, right? And, you know, the, the, the stuff behind here wasn't in the original drawing. Yeah. It was filled in, right, using image completion tools. Okay. So and you it's, just it's, use it's, it's a somewhat the smart erase process. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah so okay. I kind of used, used Photoshop tools, but I'm working okay. on automating that. This is actually okay. an intern project this summer. Okay. So I can peel off this layer here. Right. And this one here. And you see, you know, it's obvious yes. artifacts, right? But yes. it's, it's good enough to do the following. So I can now put these uh, planes on different, you know, like different depth planes. And then I can zoom in <laughs> using parallax. <laughs> and can do this effect. Oh. So you can like, oh, go in. Gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can, you know, follow these trees. Oh, and you can create beautiful animations. Right? And so, so you, can, you can author this. And I think you can create an amazing experience. Wow, um, that is amazing. And yeah, I don't know. So I think it's it's about creating kind of a new experiment, yeah, experience yeah, yeah. when reading these comic books. So there's a bunch of things you can do. Um, the other thing I'm thinking about is you know doing like like ambient motions, for example. You can animate clouds in the panels. So right. You can can make make you know trees swing in the wind or something like that. You know, just make it feel a little bit more alive. So that's that's the future of this. This really rocks. Yeah, that's very cool. Okay, so I have a couple more questions, kind of like about the implementation. So, like, so something like this, like the code that that takes the takes the images and creates your format. How big is it? Uh, how big and, and in what measure? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean, like lines, lines of, code. of code, or I mean, I know, like this, like MATLAB, or what do you? What? No, no, it's um, it's, it's all C plus plus code. Okay. And, you know, in, in our group, we have this library called Vision Tools. You know, which which makes all all the image handling you know much easier. And okay. We have code for doing the graph cuts and so on. It was still fairly complicated because it's 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 a pretty heavy optimization system, and there are right. components that I haven't even talked about. For example, you know, detecting where all these these dots are uh, in the panel and things like that. Okay. So I I worked you know maybe three months on on, on everything. On coding level. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and let's see. So so the you talked about scanning takes you know say ten minutes a page. What about so the rendering is. Well, you can see it's real time, right? It's real time. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's it's actually interesting. The way we represent these is um, 
Uh, let me see, I can, can, can show this. So the panel we just viewed, right? Um, I think it's this one here. Uh, let's see. Right. That's actually a different panel, but so you okay. see these three images here. So what they represent is the uh, recovered dot patterns, right? Okay. So you see it's a much resol lower resolution. Yes. And it essentially has all the, the color content right. of the, the image. So every pixel here is one of these screening dots that you saw before. Oh, okay. It's much lower resolution. And, you know, they, they are angled because um, when they print these, they print the grids, grids at, you know, different oh, angles. Oh, okay. Each other. So each one of these, so the, you're showing us the four the four so the layers, three of them, right? the three, so the color. The You're color throwing us the color layers. And, and these okay. images are small, right? So, so it's just just um, let me see, four hundred sixty by five forty oh, yeah. pixels. And then the other component is um, the, you black. Know, the black ink, right? Okay. And this is uh, what you see here. It's it's inverse color right now. Right. But see, this is um, you know recovered at higher resolution. Yeah. But then it compresses very well, yeah. right? Because it's binary, yeah. and you know. So it's very easy now to, to write, you know, like a pixel shader. That pulls that, it all together. Yeah, pulls yep. it all together and uses okay. very cubic depolation on the right. colors. And um, actually, right. uh, let me quickly show this. This is also cool. Um, so in this viewer here that I wrote, what you can do is you can um, you can turn these individual channels on and off. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, let me, let me do that. So here in this image, what I can do now is you can, you know, remove right. the color. Right. And once you're only left with the black. Um, or you can also turn off the black and just, just look at the color. Oh. Kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the, artist, the color artistry of it. Yeah, and so, so a different you know, reconstruction filter. I can turn this into a nearest neighbor filter, and then you see better these uh, three grids that have different yes. angles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a uh, simple process. All right. Every device can do this. Well, I think, I think I really geeked out on this one. <laughs> this, is, this is really awesome research, awesome work. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's fun to work on this, you know, and, and uh, I like doing these visual things where you have, you know, cool stuff to look at. It's, it's, All right. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah, sure.